I am shocked that with all the lawyers we have in this country, with all the civil rights movements, they watch as my people, the people of Bakasi, bleed and live where they fetch water, defecate on the same land, feed on the same land with no hope. Yet the country watch. Yet the country allocates in billions on elitist projects and programs. I think that if there is a moral conscience today, if there's anything I have done that is worth it, it is this project. It is my number one project because indeed I celebrate today because God has given me opportunity to put a smile on somebody's face. I could see a grandma dancing to her new home. I could see the hope. I could see that her grandchild would have a feeling that truly, truly African leadership cares. You don't give because you have enough, but because you care enough. But because we care, even from the north in the state house, we must demonstrate the empathy and the show of love and concern for our brothers. We must at this point handhold each other and provide a shoulder for our weaker brothers to lean on as we go through the process of the expansion of this extent to accommodate more people. I am lucky because I have a circumstance akin to yours, and so I feel you and I know your pain. But please, let's take today to dance. Let's take today to celebrate. Let's use today as a day to tell a story, a reverse of all that has been your experience, that finally you have a home called your own. You have a house that is yours. You can get a certificate of occupancy. This is the first social housing in Africa, in absolute terms, where the ownership is in perpetuity, where the property is yours, where there will be no time, you say, the parents, you can now move and let another person enter. No, it is your house, it is yours to keep forever and ever. We will continue to expand it. It is not enough to provide you housing because this is not shelter. This is housing. It means it has amenities, it has power, it has water, it has all the utilities you will so need. You have solar lighting, you have the generator, and you have the third grid, which is the national grid. But today I'm going to also assure you that we have acquired boats, which are by the water side, to enable you to do fishing for those who can fish. We have also made provisions for cash. So we have a takeoff grant of 50 million to support all of you who live here who want to start small businesses. <laughs>Taxi drivers, airport taxi drivers, we have exempted small salon owners, small catering and restaurant points, Mama Put, E3 points, all those small, small basic survival people selling of produce, struggling to earn a living. They have been exempted today from paying tax. We have exempted them because it is better for me as a governor that I rather task my brain than to tax my people. And great perseverance, you have the right for anybody who comes before you to demand tax, you have the right to say, stop, the governor has said we should not pay tax. Why will a small person carry banana from his farm to go and sell and produce people are there taxing him for produce? Why will somebody carry granite to go to market and somebody is putting a checkpoint on the road and collecting money from the granite seller? This is not Ben Ayade, this is not my nature. I am not wired for this insensitivity to a weaker person. I have abolished produce tax. Let farmers earn their money, let them keep their money. Because you didn't give them fertilizer, you did not irrigate the soil, you did not prepare the soil for them, you did not do the land clearing for them. Why do you want to tax them? Why do you put pressure on that, your small brother or sister, whose situation is much worse? Why will we expect that people who don't have scholarship for their children, who don't have good schools, they struggle to pay, struggle with the uniforms, struggle to have security in their small businesses, struggle to get water with their borehole, struggle with generator, and government is providing almost nothing to come back to such people and tax them. I, I think this is the greatest injustice. I never knew that five years into office as governor, I would still find somebody who, who live in a tax house in Crossroads. I almost cried because 
I knew how prepared I was, but it, it didn't end the way I had dreamt for the state. And I, I just think that somewhere God will just help me because I really wish I could really help. Yeah. I really wish I could help. It's very painful, truly, truly. I can't put five years and I've not been able to do the change I wished. I know of some small people whose businesses are closed because even after signing into law that they should stop collecting tax, I still find people giving political appointment for a completely different thing. And you see them go back to these same people and dragging them and seizing and closing their shops and taxing. If we have to pay tax, let me contact the anti-tax agency. They will give us a tax code whether we fall under the category of those to pay tax or not. So your vehicles, your public life, your telephone numbers will be in the public domain because everybody must call you to clear whether they have to pay tax or not to pay tax. And so I pick only men of God and women of God to serve here. I charge you that by the time you are done, let your agency be a world-class example for other states and countries to emulate. If God sees into my heart, let him take every single wealth I have, if he can make every single cross rich. If he can take every single cross out of poverty, let Ben Ayade and the Ayades, let us be poor for cross to be comfortable. Let me see Calabar thrive again. And this is part of my post-COVID-19 response.